middle schooler Tanaka arrives late to the science club's lab. The club president, Ueno, reprimands him for his tardiness and then shows off her latest invention. The ultimate in portable filtration, Rocker Kun. Using this, one can turn even the most fetid of waters into an oasis. Ueno then shows Tanaka her own purified urine, clean and crystal clear. Um, the bewildered boy tells her to put it away since it's gross. Ueno urges Tanaka to drink her purified urine. He thinks, is this girl okay in the head? He refuses and she insists that he can't know Rocker Kun's awesome power if he doesn't. He tells her there must be some other way. She then asks, you just don't want to drink my pee, do you? Well, duh, who'd want that? Ueno tells Tanaka that experiments like these hinge on time, place, and opportunity. When Rocker Kun becomes needed, it's a matter of survival. Since no amount of coaxing could convince him, she asks the other club member Yamashita to drink it instead. Yamashita tells her she could sue her. Unfortunately, Yamashita ends up drinking it. After she gulps it down, Tanaka asks her if she's okay. She replies that the pee has neither taste nor odor. Poor Yamashita. And also, ew. After this, Ueno is still hell-bent on Tanaka drinking some of her urine. He reasons out that if Yamashita already had some, that should be enough. Ueno tells him that it's pointless unless he drinks it too. Why is she making this all about him? For some reason, Ueno starts blushing and exclaims, Of course, I want you to drink this. Tanaka is still confused, which frustrates Ueno and makes her fall to her knees. Tanaka then rationalizes her behavior. She wants him to drink it to confirm her experiment. But Yamashita already drank it, so... When is being mean to him? This, of course, just ups the ante. It's all Tanaka can do to dodge the flask holding Ueno's filtered pee. Tanaka tells her to stop because it's gross. Really gross. At that, she falls to her knees again and cries, telling him to stop calling her gross. Yamashita tells Tanaka that he's gone too far. Amidst Ueno's lamenting, Yamashita explains that Ueno wants to be upfront with her feelings, but she got too nervous. Yamashita Yamashita thinks that's why she chose this mistaken route instead. Yamashita then consoles Ueno saying she's sure Tanaka will come around. She then tells Tanaka it's up to him now, handing out the flask. Yeah, no, he still won't. This angers the two girls. This is when he should have drank it all down. And who the heck stands like a dummy when someone tells you they like you? Well, the stuff about Ueno's feelings flew right over his head. A shrieking Ueno maintains that he's just been told. He becomes shocked and asks by whom. This frustrates Ueno even more. At that, Tanaka takes his leave since she's very cranky. Once he's gone, Ueno and Yamashita express their exasperation over Tanaka's denseness. Ueno did everything to confess, but he's not taking a hint. But still, Ueno likes him very much. Yamashita suggests that maybe Ueno should just slip it into his water bottle next time. She replies that she's going to mix it into his school lunch. Then, she'll tell everyone over the intercom. That's just cruel. The next day at the lab, Ueno is on top of a platform trying to replicate a skit wherein she's trying to reach a top shelf with Tanaka underneath her. Tanaka, as always, has no reaction and just says that he's not really a fan of theater. Who do you think I'm doing this for? She asks. Just give me the bullet points, Tanaka replies. Savage. While blushing a little, Ueno says it would be nothing but trouble if they lived together. The dense Tanaka asks what she means and she tells him to just forget it already and calls him a fool. She explains that scoundrels tend to focus their gaze on the lower half of girls' bodies. What they're looking for? The undies under the skirts really pleats. And so, she presents another one of her inventions. Kuma Tender Number 2. It can manipulate the mysterious dark matter of outer space, allowing it to render a localized area completely invisible. Ooh boy, I have a bad feeling about this. Ueno presses the switch and Tanaka wonders if it did anything at all. Ueno points to Yamashita's glasses. They're now dark, brimming with dark matter. Ueno continues to explain that with one of Kuma Tender number 2 under the skirt, the undies region, which up until now has been on full display, can help hide the goods. It can prevent undies shots, but to what angle will skirt access be blocked? 
This means it's testing time. They'll verify by lifting a skirt in 10 degree increments up to 120 degrees. Tanaka has been assigned to take down notes while Uena does the skirt lifting. She tells him that he needs to take a peek under her skirt. Sometimes I hate it when I'm right. This is one of those times. Tanaka says that just normally looking at her skirt is enough, but the experiment is to verify its preventative abilities, so he has to look all up in there. She lifts a bit of her skirt up and urges him to hurry up and get an eyeful already. He remarks that she's being oddly stubborn about this. She tells him that she's never heard a guy complain so much about being voluntarily invited to get up in a girl's crotch. Tanaka has no choice but to take a peek. And true enough, Kuma Tander number 2 is effective. It's all dark matter under her skirt. Uena loudly proclaims that she's given herself a handicap since she's very confident in her invention. She's actually not wearing anything underneath. Tanaka doesn't really care about this though. I'm sure she expected a different kind of reaction from him. They've reached up to 80 degrees and it still works fine. Now, the time has come for the 90 degree lifting of the skirt. The all out angle, so to speak. When she does, he still can't see anything. Kuma Tander number 2 is the real deal, which is really cool, but Uena is still frustrated. Tadaka's not flustered at the possibility of seeing her bits at all. He should be imagining that underneath her skirt, but. He doesn't. Tanaka asks her what that is. So the flustered Ueno talks in riddles. As expected, Tanaka still doesn't get it. He turns off the Kuma Tander number 2 and tries to take a peek under her skirt, but now Ueno gets shy all of a sudden. After all, she's not wearing anything underneath. She prevents him from lifting her skirt up and asks for Yamashita's help. On the other hand, Yamashita can't see a thing because her glasses are filled with dark matter. Ueno has another new invention, but to see it work its magic, she needs Tanaka's underwear. To which, Tanaka asks, are you a perv or something? She calls her latest invention Dash Tan, the instant deodorizer. Dash Tan emits mysterious electromagnetic waves at its target allowing it to instantly smite any and all odors, guiding them straight to the heavens. In any case, they need the right medium to test its ability to deodorize. After consulting with Yamashita, it's determined that Tanaka's underwear is the most odoriferous substance at hand. Ueno adds, it was your drawers hands down, Tanaka, and the two girls do a little clap. Tanaka comments that this is beyond rude. Ueno tells him they won't mind at all, so he can go ahead and drop those pants. He says he'll mind and reminds the club president to stop always picking on him. Why can't the three of them bring something instead? She thinks about this and says that the more samples, the better. Yamashita admits that this reasoning is fine. Ueno decides that she and Yamashita shall contribute something as well. However, it's a one-time deal. The two girls begin taking off their undies and Tanaka gets flustered. This isn't what he meant. Ultimately, Ueno decides that Tanaka give up his indoor slippers, Yamashita her socks, and she shall contribute her tights. They then exchange items, and Ueno tells her club members to smell them. They have to, or they won't know if the deodorization works. Ueno starts sniffing Yamashita's socks without a second thought. Up next, Tanaka sniffing her tights. She expects him to feel at least embarrassed to be doing this, but he does it so casually and says that the tights reek. She is horrified to hear this from him. Yamashita sniffs Uena's tights as well, and she defends the president, saying that the scent is normal. Tanaka sniffs Yamashita's socks and says that Uena's tights smell way worse. He rubs salt in the wound by saying that Uena's tights smell like eight of Yamashita's socks. Ouch! Tanaka prepares to deodorize the tights, but Yamashita interferes saying they don't need cleaning. They don't stink. The two end up in a tug of war involving Uena's tights, both insisting their opinion of its scent is right. Ueno, incredibly mortified, ends up running out of the lab. The next day, Ueno tells Tanaka that she's sure he's noticed something different about her body. Ueno explains that six layers of shock absorbing gel lie beneath the seven layer ultra thin elastic materials. With this, she made protective clothing no thicker than normal fabric yet able to absorb any and all attacks. Tanaka, amazed, asks if she didn't bring it with her. Well, Tanaka, this 176 protective gear is already up on her person. In fact, he's free to guess where it is. Whoever gets it right will get it as a present. 
My dear viewers, it turns out that Ueno has outfitted herself with brazier type protective gear. Due to her adding some uh, enhancements to that part of her body, it surely is noticeable. Hence, she's unbeatable. Touching a woman's chest is forbidden. What's more, Tanaka's picture of male puberty. At his age, he tries to hide when he's getting an eyeful, but he will have to openly stare if he wants to get the deets on these tatas. He'll have to admit that he's aware of her normal size and the crux of this artfully crafted multi-layer trap forever after, Tanaka's thoughts will turn to the jiggle of these jugs. Tanaka says he got it and then smacks Uena's butt. In pain, she reprimands him. How dare he hit a young girl's spurred buttocks. He reasons that she told him to hit her hard. Bueno, frustrated with Tanaka as usual, tells him he needs to look somewhere he usually doesn't. He smacks her again. I just told you, it's not there. She fumes. Tanaka's sure it is, since she always wears tights but not today. She explains that she hasn't worn them because he's going on about how much they stink. Yamashita's too stunned to speak. Tanaka once again hits Uena's butt. Oh boy. She requests a timeout and crawls away from him, but he keeps up with her as he urges her to fess up. Yamashita just thinks about an applicable law against the violent act she's seeing. Since she can no longer take the pain, Uena lies about Tanaka being right. With this, he immediately stops and asks for the protective gear. She said he could have it if he got it right, after all. Out of desperation, she gives him her undies, lying that it's her protective gear. He comments that she has no fashion sense as he's holding it up. Eventually, he returns it to her, saying he has no use for it. Tanaka 4 Ueno 0 Poor Ueno one day, a girl named Kitanaga visits Ueno in the lab. It turns out she has asked for something from her, which Ueno gave right away. Whatever Ueno's invention is, Kitanaga decides to test it stat. She removes her sweater, revealing her swimsuit, which she also tries to remove. Thankfully, Ueno stops her. She asks her why and Kitanaga replies she might as well try it out. Ueno still complains, but Kitanaga just waves it away. But then she teases Ueno. Is she bothered because the girl's trying to get unclothed in front of Tanaka? Tanaka asks what they're talking about, and Kitanaga shares that they've had someone peeping on their swimming club recently. She's already informed the teacher, but since she's the club captain, she thought she should do something too. Ueno adds that it's why Kitanaga asked her to invent the kilt hide. It measures and modulates the wave nature of lights in the surrounding area, projecting pseudo stereoscopic imagery upon any lewd visual input. But thus, even should one be ogled by a camera wielding perv, it can block access to all seductive zones. Kitanaga then continues her actions, and Ueno frantically covers her chest. The captain maintains that she has to try it to see if it works. Kitanaga gets completely bare, and Ueno calls for Yamashita's help. Ever loyal, she quickly smacks Tanaka's face with her book, making him crouch in pain. Poor guy. Ueno urges Kitanaga to hurry up and get dressed while she's still in the clear, but Kitanaga is adamant about testing the kill tide on Tanaka, aka a guy. She's now completely bare, by the way. Tanaka tells her that she's covered in black things. She asks him if the idea of the girls in the swimming club changing into their swimsuits with their bodies all covered in black gets him excited at all. Ueno is all uneasy watching this unfold. Much to Kitanaga's surprise, Tanaka reaches over and touches her chest. She gets terrified and surprised at the same time. Ueno gets angry at Tanaka. He explains that he wasn't trying to touch Kitanaga, he's just curious about the black thingy. What are they even attached to? Wen explains that it's kind of a three-dimensional image projected into the air. Yamashita raises her hand which also has the similar black thingy. And this distracts Tanaka. Ueno tells Kitanaga to hurry and put on her swimsuit. As she watches the three club members, Kitanaga thinks about how worried she was when he heard Ueno stressing about the club. But it seems like they're having fun. Kitanaga, still in her birthday suit, tells Ueno she's glad to see another side of her and leaves the lab. Girly, what are you doing? The next day at the lab, Ueno complains about how she's thirsty. Tanaka offers her some barley tea, but she ignores him and continues to act like she's thirsty. She then brings out another one of her inventions. This is like an ad with bad acting. He asks her what it is and it's Garaktan. By rotating clockwise with just the right amount of force, it can reach out to the galaxy and produce fresh tasting water. Ueno shows them how it's used, and Tanaka asks where the water came from. 
She, exasperated, replies that it came from the Milky Way. She just said Garaktan can reach out to the galaxy. She then asks him to have a drink. He replies that he's fine and insists that she's the one who's thirsty. He asks if the water is even safe to drink since it's kind of suspicious. He hasn't moved on from the pee incident, it seems. She retorts that it's an insult to our galaxy. She grabs the bottle from Tanaka's hand and drinks from it. Ah, the flavor of the Milky Way, she enthuses. She tells him it's his turn to drink and he responds that he's not very thirsty. She exclaims, just shut up and drink already. Instead of drinking from the same bottle as Ueno, Tanaka takes a new bottle and drinks from there. Ueno feels defeated as she laments how he drank from a different bottle. Was she hoping they'd have an indirect smooch or something? Tanaka says, I mean, you put your lips on that one, right? I've never been a fan of sharing the same drink with someone. It's just off-putting. I'm sure you like it even less than me, right? I mean, a boy is putting his mouth where yours has been. That sort of thing bothers girls even more, right? Man, Tanaka really doesn't get it, huh? Ueno, with her face beat red, tells him that she doesn't worry about indirect kisses or things of that nature. She goes into a long rant about why she supposedly doesn't give a damn about these things. Tanaka challenges her to place her lips where his had been. She lies and insists it's not a big deal. Ueno takes his water bottle and tries her hardest to drink from it. She's so excited, flustered, that her hands are shaking badly. In her unsteadiness, the water bottle falls to the ground and the water inside it spills. Oh no, the Milky Way water. He tells her she doesn't have to force herself and leaves the lab to get a rag. Now that he's nowhere in sight, she quickly picks up the bottle and tries to place her lips in the opening. But Tanaka immediately returns and tells her that it's not her water bottle. Out of embarrassment, she defends herself and says, Ah, uh, yes, that's right. How clumsy of me. They look so similar. You can't blame me, right? Oh my, oh my. And that's how things go every day in the science club. With Ueno juggling between inventing new things and becoming closer to her crush Tanaka and Yamashita being her mostly silent supporter, each passing day is fun-filled and stressful. Let's just hope Tanaka's denseness will stop its dancing. Subscribe to watch more videos like this. Turn on notifications. And leave a like it really helps the channel out. Thank you for watching.